and welcome to another video and welcome to the 2019 Toyota Camry Hybrid. Now, the first thing is that this is a first proper challenge on this channel. Yes, so I'm going to explain what the challenge is all about. But first, this is the car that I'm going to be driving for the challenge. And it's sort of a long test range challenge. Now, this car is as you know is a hybrid where it, it, it sort of starts off as a hybrid when the car is running and there is a battery power the motor is being powered by a battery so initially the first few kilometers when you drive the car under say about 10 to 20 kilometers at that point of time the the car will run purely on battery power and it's got a range of about 15 kilometers 10 to 15 kilometers so it will do that uh, again when the batteries go down it will switch on to the engine automatically but if you cross the 20 kilometer per hour speed then automatically again it shifts to the engine power anyways so all of the details i'm going to be explaining you all while we drive along in the car but first let me show you the start procedure for this car it's it's a bizarrely quiet procedure so what you do is I have the key here. I just I just press the brake pedal and it tells me to start. And my car has started in complete silence. So I put the car in D and I am off in silence. Now that is a quite honest, really bizarre experience, but in a good way because you tend to think cars are Get that engine sound when you start the car and then you know that you're moving forward but in this you just don't recognize any sound it's simply just nothing literally or sometimes you may you may notice the whirling and the winding sound of the motor but otherwise there's literally nothing absolutely no sound so challenge that we are going to do today is a long range challenge as I mentioned before. Now Toyota claims that this car can do on a full petrol tank an average of about uh, 26 kilometers per liter. That's the claimed average. Now as you know these, these average figures that they come up with are obviously in a test conditions and the car is in a, in a, in a, in a testing environment. but how real how close can you really get to the the actual average well today i'm gonna be finding that out how you may ask so i am on my way to the city of Bujera, which is 135 kilometers from here and i'm gonna come back as well so it, it's, it's about 270 kilometers so i'm gonna be testing how much uh, sort of efficiency the car will be delivering because so far since the day that I've been driving it is still delivering me about 16 kilometers per liter yes and that's pretty much the, the city drive that I do you know going around in the city accelerating hard and pushing the car again and again braking and stopping and all the usual city cycles that you go through but in this I'm gonna be doing a proper sort of test where I go on a long run and then I'm going to be coming out with the figure to you guys. Anyways, without wasting much time, let's get our challenge started. Yeah. So while I'm being stuck in traffic, I am currently just using the battery power and as you can see it's doing its job quite well so it's it's got this uh, complex set of computer that you know calculate all your ride the throttle position and also the speed they sensor every uh, they, they monitor everything and based on that they do the switching automatically so you don't have to bother all you have to do is just drive the car normally and let the car do all the the geeky stuff but so far I have about half a pack the, the battery is charged halfway and it is utilizing the, the, the battery pack currently 
for this traffic condition so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just continue driving and get back to you in some time So I have just crossed almost halfway of the first leg which is reaching towards the Fujara city. So I've covered about I think 85 kilometers and I've taken a stop over at a petrol station to buy some water because it is super hot in here and this was the only petrol station on the way so I thought I might as well take a break and update you guys as well as to how is the challenge going now one thing I wanted to mention was I am doing this challenge as as how I would drive regularly in the normal driving conditions like I would I, I am not doing anything special to increase the efficiency I am just driving just as I would sit down in the car and then just start driving off everyday kind of um, usage and also one thing I I would like to mention is I am also doing a mix of eco runs and the normal because I prefer when I'm on the highway I, I switch it on to the eco mode because anyways I am just cruising along and I use the cruise control a lot and the, the feature on this car is pretty useful and it's pretty simple as it, and anyways so it does a pretty straightforward and easy to use jump in and you are ready to use the car from day one and so I've been using the cruise control a lot and anyways I'm gonna continue forward with my journey and I'm gonna update you guys in a bit so it has been a pretty hot day as I mentioned before and already the temperatures are starting to reach up to 40 degrees and also a very special mention is that the battery also tends to get affected because of the temperature and as it gets gets to heat up the, the, the efficiency of the battery may start reducing as well but nonetheless this is still a pretty pretty good car in terms of its efficiency which is what I am currently seeing so I've been driving in a pretty mixed sort of conditions you know the, the, where I've been cruising at around uh, 120 kilometers to 135 which I am currently doing so it's 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 actually a very proper proper kind of real world conditions that I am testing this car in and I, I, I'm honestly anyway surprised with, with the efficiency that it is giving me right now which is 16 but I am I'm more interested in what I get when I do a long run and that is why this this test so this car comes with a 2.5 liter petrol engine and it, it is uh, mated with a uh, an electric uh, motor and that is being powered by a battery and then the battery keeps charging in between when you are cruising or when you are braking at that point of time the, the battery just keeps charging and also even the engine power is used in a in, in a in a in a gentle way to charge the batteries as well so the engine produces about 176 bhp and it produces 220 newton meters but the electric motor is super powerful now that produces 118 uh, brake horsepower and 202 newton meter let me explain you what really happens in an electric motor so when you when you have an electric motor on board the the, the acceleration because the electric motor gives you the torque from right from the word go so the 202 newton meters that we have is available right from the start and it starts delivering that and you can see that in the performance because step on the throttle and it just flies this car just literally flies and with a combination of battery power and the, the engine power the, the the car definitely feels very fast and very responsive because 
I have tested a, a, a few a few other cars which were normal petrol engines, but this one definitely feels a lot more faster. So it's also done in a very clever way, you know, the whole switching because you don't really realize or notice anything of, of, of the switch unless you notice on your screen where the car is where the car is engaging the battery power and also is doing the it's engaging the engine as well. So for that reason the system works very well. So the car gives a combined output along with the electric and the, the engine gives a combined output power of 221 brake horsepower and that is really quite a lot because this car is is well distributed in terms of its weight because the battery pack is situated at the back and the engine is situated in the front. Now, time and again I have mentioned that you know, Toyotas have been pretty amazing with, with its hybrid technology thanks to their participation in the Le Mans racing in the, the LMP1 series. If you don't know, you should just check that out because that is fascinating of a journey to follow and I do that. And that technology, they've, they've pretty much gotten that into this car and all, all their hybrid lineups that are currently coming up and they are utilizing this technology quite well. Anyways, it's still a long way and I'm going to continue cruising at this speed and I'm going to catch up with you all in some time. I have reached my destination which was about 140 kilometers from the start and so far I checked my efficiency I, I was doing about 16.5 kilometers per liter and that is a mix of pretty much the city drive the highway drive and at pretty close to 135 kilometers now that's a pretty high speed because Let's be honest, when you uh, uh, run your car between the range, RPM range of 2000 to 3000 or about 1500 to 2500, that is when your car is going to be the maximum efficient. But in these conditions, I was driving the car at 135, so the RPMs were pretty much close to 3500 to 4000. That is why another reason that this this is still uh, around 16.5 and that is bear in mind a pretty good average currently as well based on these conditions and it's a pretty hot day as well and i have just about used a little less than a quarter of a fuel tank and this has about 50 liters worth of tank but anyways i'm pretty sure i will be reaching back with pretty much half a tank remaining <sighs> now while I'll admit that it has been a very long day of work now I am ready to go back for this return journey I am going to be doing something different now what I'll be doing is that um, I will be driving the car at a constant speed of 120 kilometers because I just want to see how much more I can squeeze out of this car every bit of economy that I can get out of this car and I want to make sure that, that I, I, I reach as close to the claimed uh, uh, economy as possible anyways in that case I'm going to start my journey and it's going to take me another one and a half hours and 140 kilometers and I shall get back to you after that. And after driving for about 2 hours and uh, 140 kilometers, I have finally reached home. But what I can tell you is for successfully driving at the speed of 120 constantly, uh, I managed to do about 17.5 kilometers per liter which is not the bad thing at all to be honest with you because if you see my combined average was 16.5 and 17.5 which is about 17 for the entire trip and that is pretty impressive in the real world conditions because 
let's be honest this car has been totally amazing throughout it has been comfortable it has been a, a long cruiser comfortable long cruiser and i mean it's got everything in in it it be the entertainment system be it the driving aids and pretty much it anyways a detailed review will be coming out soon on this car as well so make sure to check that out give it a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to share and subscribe for more videos to come and i shall see you in the next video Bye-bye.